what's up what's good what's going on family so let's just take a quick reading no intention don't even know when i'm going to release this reading let's just see where spirit takes us but it is for sagittarius sun moon rising north node venus as well as that ninth house very particular messages for ninth house guys um <clears throat> on the mandula awakening but even with that being said these are general so just take what resonates and bless someone else with the rest okay Ooh, so we have something like there's going to be a time of celebration that is coming on the backs of some hard work that you have done. So I feel like that because of like some hard work is being acknowledged, you're definitely about to be in the company, being good company. Yes, um, there's a need to create some routine around you. Um, I do feel like that what you've been working on, it is getting it's headed you in the right direction. Okay. And I do feel like you're going to be getting some major recognition. You're going to have something to celebrate, like not just a small milestone. I feel like that you're going to have a major a milestone worthy of celebrating very soon, Sag. Um, so make sure that you're getting yourself on a routine so that you can see, be able to see in areas where there are less places for things to fall through the cracks in areas where you may procrastinate if you have a schedule and a routine then it's easier not to allow those procrastinations to fall through these cracks okay um it give, it helps you stick to some structure it is structure is going to be very useful in the times ahead okay so we're we keep getting this reading here for the sagittarius collective so we'll address it i do feel like that um this get a reading card. What this is really saying here is maybe shift your perspective, you know, either really get a personal reading or do me a solid and shift your perspective for what it is that you're watching tarot for. Because what I've noticed here is when I do the readings, even though you're telling me you're asking about this, I can already pick up on what it is that you're really asking about. So there's a definitely a need to shift your intention for watching Tarot. And I feel like that if you have any confusion with that, this may be the time that the universe is going to be leading you to the appropriate reader to help you along your journey. Okay. Because I feel like that there's a need for you to take a break from a situation that is preventing your glow up, but you in denial about it. You want un you just like you're, there's this energy of not really willing to accept the unhealthy situation, even though the cycles is blatantly clear. But don't let me harper on you. I'm just telling you what the card is talking to me about. All right, Sagittarius, let's see what's going on. Let's see. Ooh, definitely a faded change getting you into a more fulfilling cycle. Um, you have completed a cycle. It's going to be worthy of celebration. And so now you're moving into this faded era that is going to be free flowing, but it does require some structure to it. Okay. Let's see, Spirit, how is this showing up in the Sagittarius Ninth House Collective's life? Like, how is this showing up in the daily? Thank you, Spirit. Yeah. So we have the world. We have the Four of Cups. Spirit is telling me to switch those around. Yes, sir. Your smell. Yes, I shall do that. Uh-huh. Okay. The tower. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Can't wait to clarify this beauty. Um, so I definitely feel like that you're not seeing something as worthy of celebrating, clearly. Um, I feel like that's how this is showing up is it may come in as and you view it as a missed opportunity. So you may see someone else celebrating something that you feel like you should have been celebrating. Okay. You may feel like that something should have been yours and somebody else is getting the best of it. Okay. And so you may feel like you're just over it. You're tired of putting in the hard work on situations. Yet someone else always gets the benefit of it or they get the reward of it. Well, in this present moment, this is actually showing up 
to, to make you available for a brand new opportunity that you've not been available. Like you couldn't see this. You, you're still not seeing it because this situation is consuming you. So the opportunity here is to close out this cycle that consumes so much of you. And you really are over it anyways. So the opportunity is to close this cycle out and to get you more balanced. Like someone is trying to give you what, like somebody's trying to double, like somebody's trying to give you what you feel like this situation took from you. And because of everything that you put into this previous situation, you're actually being gifted an opportunity to double up what's been given to you. But you must first take, you must balance out your emotional perspective. Now, I do feel like that this is going to allow you to go through some healing here. But let's look at this for, I mean, let's look at the Three of Swords for what's on the other side. What's on the, why is the Three of Swords here? Mm hmm. Okay, okay. Um, I do feel, I, I, I do feel like that it's not going to be a easy, it's going to be a sting. You know what I'm saying? Which is why it's saying, if you can get yourself into a structure now, when you actually go to celebrate it, you won't get yourself, you won't fall into a pity because it's almost, I don't know, there's something about this. Like you have to be able to see the truth and the potential of this very situation that it's going to require a lot of internal strength to walk away from. And to be honest with you, this one walking away from this and the internal strength that it's going to require, it is going to like, there's this energy of it almost like throwing you off emotionally. And so what could start, what could be supposed to be a celebration could end up being like, uh, uh, let me drown my sorrows away, but it's really supposed to be a celebratory energy. Okay. That's what I'm getting. Let's look at the challenge. Why is the queen? Let, let, no, let's look at the four cups. Let's see. What is this? Let's look. Let's look. What is the, why is the four cups? How this is showing up in Sagittarius's life? Show me clearly into the Three of Cups. What is this going on in this Three of Cups here, Spirit? So we have the Ten of Swords in the reverse and the Queen of Cups here, who is in the challenging position. So you could know a Cancer or a Gemini who is going to like... A Cancer, I feel like that you... There's an ending here, okay? There is an ending here. Uh, someone could have uh, betrayed you with a cancer. Or this cancer could have taken your idea and ran off with it, okay? Like you and this cancer could have invested a lot of energy together. And it's almost as if this cancer ran off in, like, you know what I'm saying? And made something elsewhere. I do feel like the emotional part. Let me see what the let me see what is this cancer energy here. What's at the bottom first? Yeah, the ten of pentacles. Could have to do with money. Give me just a second. Guys, you're gonna have to part in the background noise. My children are coming in um, and cleaning up. So what I'm getting here is um there could like there is with the ten of pentacles being in the reverse and then the five of cups being behind that in the reverse i do feel like that there was a rash haste decision that someone made it caused someone to lose some type of financial like there was some type of it caused like there's some type of financial issue here okay give me just a second let me close the office door um, I do feel as if you know there was some rash haste decisions made and the like, there was this resistance to making some changes that needed to be made, that needed to be made. And because someone didn't slow down, I do feel like that there was some type of financial issue, okay, that took place. Um, I 
One thing that I'm picking up on What's in this? Okay, so what's in the Ace of Cups here? What's in the Ace of Cups here for Sagittarius? What's in the Ace of Cups here, Spirit? That's the Knight of Cups. Okay, thank you, Spirit. This is the Knight of Cups. That's what I was thinking about. So, how this keeps showing up, I do feel like it keeps showing up as unrequited love. I definitely feel, and then, and then so if it's the Knight of Cups, this is a, a Pisces or an Aquarius. So there's a Pisces and or an Aquarius, that energy that has placed you in a third party. Um, and I feel like that this isn't the first time around here, okay? I do feel like that the Three of Cups here is, I mean, the Ten of Swords in the reverse is this energy of like, not really being able to forgive this energy and constantly focusing on it and therefore not able to see the ace of cups here so let's see what is this ace of cups that definitely switches the game up because uh the scout in this deck is the knight of cups so the ace of cups is the seven of wands so this is something that you're guarded against it's almost the energy of it's almost the energy of feeling like uh, like this is the love that you desire like this is the love like this ace of cups is like what you manifest it's like what you truly in your heart truly desire but because you constantly focus your mental space on this unrequited situations that you haven't forgiven, it's you're you're blocking this out. You're keeping this at bay. You're keeping yourself single and independent, and you're becoming hopeless and helpless, thinking that that's the all that you can have. And so, guess what? You end up manifesting that in at all costs, and it's like you end up really fighting to be single and independent at all costs. So. This is because you're not actively uh, healing and addressing these wounds. However, with celebration here and get a routine, I feel like that this is something that is closing up. Let me Before I look at the opportunity here, I do want to look at the challenge. Because the Queen of Cups in the challenge in position, it does speak about being overly sensitive and overly emotionally. Overly emotional. And because of these attributes, you give off this energy of untrusting because people never know how you're going to react or respond. Okay? So let's look at this Queen of Cups. And guys, if you're still resignating or you're still with me at 1249 uh, in, we would absolutely appreciate that thumbs up down below. Yeah, the Ten of Cups in the reverse. Yeah, um, the Queen of Swords in the reverse and then the Queen of Pentacles in the reverse. So this is, yeah, this, okay, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. There is a part of you that shows up as greedy based off of being put in unrequited situations. Okay, so uh, these unrequited situations from the past have caused you to take on certain survival techniques and they do. It's like a, it's like an ex ex exchange. It's like in order like I don't I, you're not going for your hat. Your ten of cups is in the reverse, meaning that the challenge here is that the way that you approach this situation. And I knew I felt I was picking up on that energy pretty strong. You're giving off the energetic vibration of you're not worthy of trust because it's almost like there's it. I'm not going to move based off of what really makes me happy. Because if you didn't know when you are energetically, truly happy and something really does make you authentically happy it there's a an energetic spark that is undeniably visible right so when the energies external to us put us in those positions and that happiness is illuminated they it, if they're really alert and they're intuitive or they're just awakened then they can see this so then when you begin to make decisions that don't feed into that and you begin to make decisions that are a um the queen of swords in the reverse is very emotionally detached harsh and bitter so it's like you make like small cruel um comments and then you um you know what i'm saying and and then it's like it's like a 
only for a fair exchange. You know what I'm saying? So then it's like you only deal in pit pro quo energy. And when we think about it, if we're think if we're wanting something romantically and to deal with all this unrequited love, but yet still have all of this love cup this cup energy on the board, this does someone does want emotional fulfillment. However, the exchange is not it's not where you're calling in. It's not at all what you're calling in. So the intention of what is being given out, it is being called to be reviewed here. Yeah, learn a new way of making your decisions. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, when you make your choices, make your decisions, you don't necessarily have to come off as, like, let's just say that you are a giver and you give and it's even even though you're a giver i'm not just giving just because the hell of it you know what i'm saying i i do expect at least i i, I don't have i at least at the bare minimum expect your respect you know what i'm saying if we're in this giving and we're exchanging i expect respect and so it's like give off a clear indication of your boundaries and your expectations moving forward because without that it's like oh i did that oh and i didn't get this in return ah well bet but i don't do that again so then it's like somebody's taking it as i was shit you didn't really do you didn't do that for me anyways you didn't do that for me anyways. You know what I'm saying? You did that because you was expecting something in return. And the moment I can't give it to you, then you take that away. It's not about giving with no expectation in return. It's about being clear on what is it that you're expecting from this situation as a whole. Period. And I'm going to break this down. And I probably should. And that's why I'm not sure when I'm going to release this. But I'm going to give you an example and try to bring it to just your world. How to make it real life for us. Um... You know, in my last situation, in my last situation, relationship, um, I was kind of not really confident enough to really speak up and really, you know, make it clear that, you know, because to be honest with you, I felt like I was doing a lot, but they didn't feel like I was doing a lot. And but that comes from not really understanding and not speaking on and being honest and being like, hey, like this ain't really what I'm looking for. But because it's you, I'm going to give it a go. But I know that I'm still on this job. You know what I'm saying? I didn't make it clear of the journey that I'm on. Didn't make it clear of the journey that I'm on. Why, well, 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 Keanu, well, why didn't you make your journey clear? I don't know. We're still trying to figure that out. But where I'm at with it is it's like, okay, well, maybe you weren't comfortable with truly because me and this person had also had words in our friendship era about this, this, this. And this I consider part of my journey to head me in my hip. This is part of my healing journey. You know what I'm saying? So then it's like, well, maybe you wasn't ex comfortable expressing where you was on your journey and that you are still on your journey um, because of fear of rejection. You know what I'm saying? So then I had to start to look at that. But at the end of the day, that relationship, it really did. The bottom just kind of like, uh, it didn't, it, it wasn't sustainable because no one was being honest with where you were on your journey, what you was, what, what we was expecting from one another, what, not even just expecting from one another. We wasn't clear on what we was expecting from anybody external to us at that time. You know what I'm saying? Me personally, I can speak for a fact that I know that my healing journey is not over. And the healing journey is a lifetime thing, but I'm not really positive that I'm in the place on my journey at this moment. Of course, not knowing that that's gone, but I definitely wasn't sure at the time that I met him or the time that he, ch not met him, the time that he tried to initiate the level up. I knew that I wasn't ready for a relationship, you know what I'm saying? And it's so crazy because I have a, a, a neighbor, I'll call him a neighbor, not a silly friend. I have a neighbor that noticed that I was always shaking my leg. I was always pouncing and bouncing when I was entertaining that energy. 
And it is because I was so anxious and so rambunctious because I had so much unexpressed Kiana going on at that time because I didn't feel comfortable being the true essence of who I truly was. And because I didn't feel comfortable in being that true essence of who I was, then I was coming off as someone who was being this, like I was coming off as distrustful. You know what I'm saying? I hope that makes sense. But that energy, that, that so the energy has to be cleaned up in order to really truly see the potential inside of situations even when um the truth may look a little the truth of it may look a little uh daunting But I will say this, this is the swords card, okay? This is the three of swords. Well, this is the nine of swords. And those of y'all that have been around, you know this is one of my favorite cards. It's all about seeing the truth and the potential of the situation. Because when you focus too much on the truth of it, you get these anxieties and these fears about uh, what it can't be and why it can't be. And then with the potential, you get overwhelmed and you think that you don't, you're not ready for it. You don't have what it takes and all of that. So when it spirit is saying like if you can balance out that perspective here then you can begin to tackle these tacks at hand if that's what this nine of swords is talking about but do you see how he's stepping on the three of swords well i feel like that this nine of swords is strategically coming out to clarify this particular three of swords because this is what's on the other side i feel like that you're going to be able to view this three of swords in a different light and you're going to be able to release the pain of it and see how it is actually giving you the stepping stones that you need to really achieve the uh, the potential inside of situations and not go based purely off of the truth of it because we have to be able to dream sag that's why take a uh, take a vacation is here but you keep denying yourself that because you feel like that there's more work to be done And nobody else can do it but you. Let's see. What's the two of pentacles here? This is the way through the challenge. Guys, don't for, um, I also want to let you all know um, that if you're still with me at 22 minutes in and you would like to know how this situation is showing up for you in your life, we are currently running a special. We have the 20 minute live session with me for $20 or the two questions for $10 in a pre-recorded session. Honestly, I'm, not, I'm, I'm just giving you my honest opinion. The 20 uh, minutes is the best route to go. Um, we can ask all the questions we can ask and get to the bottom of the situation. Um, now, uh, but if you are interested in any of that, let me know. You can find the email down in the description box below. The Ace of Swords in the reverse here is the uh, clarifying the Two of Pentacles. Yeah, the full card and the star card. My goodness, I love this. I love this. It's to become like, I feel like for one, you're trying to balance out something. It's like there's still some confusion. You know what I'm saying? Like there's some areas that you won't even allow. It's like, I don't want to look at that. I don't want to look at that. I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to address it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out how to manage my resources that I, that are within my control that don't include this situation. And Spirit is saying, uh-uh, the way through this is to look at it dead square in the eye and, be, and, and figure out how you can balance yourself out because you're not always going to be able to avoid these situations here. You know what I'm saying? The situations that bring you confusion and um and it's like you it's like you know that you you know how those feel and you don't want it anymore. You know what I'm saying? The Two of Pentacles to the Ace of Swords is the way through this. 
you do have to balance out this energy like this queen of swords energy is very beneficial she's very intuitive the queen of pentacles is very grounded like energy okay now yeah that's significant what is that I don't know why that notified like that. But anyways, moving forward, um, I definitely feel like that there is some sort of new beginning here. But in order for you to grasp a hold of it, even though you can't see it in your reality, you still must remain hopeful in it. And this through remaining hopeful and not allowing the heaviness of the despair to drag you down, then you can receive those intuitive information. But right now, I'm standing in this bitter, harsh energy of the Queen of Swords in the reverse. You are unable to use the use the Queen of Swords for the intuitive sake. And in the upright, she's very intuitive, the Queen of Swords is. Empathetic. Um, she's very empathetic. She's very supportive, very honest. But most important, she's and most important, she's very intuitive. She can hear her um spirit guides very clearly. You can't get much by the, the Queen of Swords at all, at all in the upright, okay? And so I feel like that instead of feeling like that you have to be bitter with your tongue and emotionally detached in order to, to keep harm at bay, that's not true. What you have to do is be, be grounded. Spirit is asking you to get yourself into this grounded energy, take care of yourself, put some self-care onto yourself, build your confidence up. And then this Queen of Swords in the upright, she also has a clear perspective. And the Queen of Swords can put somebody in their place with uh, you. Honey, you won't even know you putting yourself in the corner for time out. By the time the Queen of Swords gets done talking to you when she's high vibrating. Okay. I hope that makes sense. <clears throat> all right spirit team what is the closing message here for the sign of sagittarius look into my little flat five candles yeah new moon in aries take action and um the time to give rather than to take have faith in your dreams now this is all about having faith that new love is coming in but you have to step you have to be who you are you can't keep playing yourself small you can't you got to step into your true authentic self you have to make peace with the past, embrace the past. Then that's when you're going to be able to celebrate something here. It's going to require a self-care regimen. But I feel like that the action that you're needing to take definitely has a lot to do with the self-care regimen. Mm-hmm. All right, Sag, I love you. I hope that this offered you the guidance that you were seeking. And in all that we say and in all that we do moving forward, guys, let's choose peace. Love and light, Sag.